All right, next up, um, we're going to hear from Professor Greg Potty, who is the professor of uh, the chair of the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department. But before that, um, so I want to talk about Professor Potty's commitment to undergraduate education. And Erky, could you pull up the slide on transfer admissions? This is a graph I forgot to show you. So this is a similar graph that, to the one I showed you before for um, freshman admissions. This is for transfer admissions. And you can see a similar effect where over time, um, the number of applicants has grown while the amount of students that we can handle has remained the same. And we've become more and more selective for transfer admissions um, as well. And um, our attention to transfer admissions, we can go back to the um, to the introductory slide for Professor Potty. Um, so transfer admissions, as it's become more selective, we actually have become, begun to pay a lot more attention to our transfer students. And Professor Potty, as well as, you know, developing um, one, an early wireless sensor network that became sort of the beginning of this Internet of Things, the very earliest work. In fact, their work was pioneering enough that um, the 102nd Congress back in 1998 took credit for the work of Professor Potty and Professor Kaiser as one of the crowning achievements of the 102nd Congress. And you know that when politicians take credit for your work, you're doing something important. For example, when Al Gore took credit for the internet. Um, so, um, but I want to I want to talk to you just for a second about Professor Potty's commitment to undergraduate students, transfer students, and undergraduate students as a whole. So. Uh, Professor Potty and I just recently won a $400,000 grant from the Teagle Foundation um, to help us to build a better relationship with co the community colleges that provide um, the transfer students, the, the pool of transfer students that come to UCLA, to help them succeed more in the community college and to help them transition better to, to their time here at UCLA. In fact, um, we've just recently, so we have finished our first full year of having a person who is a coordinator, Wes Uihara, who is our community college coordinator and the director of our transfer center that makes sure that our transfer students have an excellent experience and, it, and, and manage that transition to UCLA, which for your first quarter here, whether you're a transfer student or a freshman um, access student, um, your first quarter is a transition. So you thought high school was difficult, but being an engineer anywhere is a very difficult experience, and, and it requires some transition. Um, so um, another aspect of this Teagle Foundation that I want to let you know about, and, and something Greg and I are very excited about, and another colleague of ours, John Villasenor, is going to help us to do, um, is to introduce, so we already have ethics that we teach in the upper division. Um, in, and this is not anything special. Any accredited engineering school has at least one ethics course you have to. Um, and that's, it's really important because engineers solve problems, solve really important problems. But also, if they don't properly understand the context of their technology in society, they can inadvertently or not inadvertently create problems. And it's very important, I think, you know, what Adnan said was crucial, that we are preparing you to be who you're going to be. And we want to make sure that when you leave UCLA, you're going to be an engineer that solves problems. And I think of the knowledge that we need to provide uh, about the context of engineering as a vaccine. If you know the stories, if you know the story of Roger Beaujolais, who knew about the fact that very cold O-rings in a space shuttle are a technological problem that needs to be paid attention to, but didn't, but let his supervisor allow, you know, keep that quiet until a space shuttle blew up. Or if you know the story of the Chevy Nova or, um, the Toyota, you know, I like to talk about um, the uncontrollable acceleration of technology, but if you remember a few years back, Toyota had a problem with um, uncontrollable acceleration. Um, again, an engineering issue, um, and, and most recently, of course, these, the Boeing jets. So the thing is, we want our engineers to grow, to, to learn about the technology and at the same time learn these stories so that when they go out into the workplace, 
um, when they are in that moment, that, that they are in the position of Roger Beaujolais or, or someone on the team at Boeing or Toyota um, or Volvo, you know, the emissions problem, you know, they realize, oh my gosh, I'm now in that story. I don't want to be that person. I've got to take this up with my supervisor. I've got to go to the person above them. We are not going to do this. I'm not going to be that person. Okay? And that, to, it has to be reflexive. Because in the moment, even as obvious as these things are on the outside, when you're that engineer buried in the details, under pressure from your boss, unless it's a reflex, you might not make the right choice. Um, and so we want to begin that process as freshmen. Um, and so part of the money that we got from the Teagle Foundation is allow allowing us to develop a seminar that our freshmen will take, in fact, starting next year, um, to tell these stories to freshmen. It's, you know, it's not a heavy lift, it's just a two-unit seminar. It doesn't take a lot of time to hear these stories and talk about them, but we want it to happen early so that you can spend all four years learning the technology in that context. So anyway, um, I happen to love the electrical and computer engineering department. Greg Potty is my chair as well. And here to tell you about our, my favorite department is Greg Potty. So what is electrical and computer engineering? It's basically the uh, study of electromagnetic phenomena and their applications. And that's pretty well everything. Because um, you just look around this room, uh, the lighting, the projection, the sound system, the power to come in in the first place, the uh, electric fans that are providing ventilation, all of it is part of the study of electrical engineering. Um, if you take the example of the cell phone, you know, often you're used to just sort of looking at the screen and thinking it's all about the apps. But inside, there are all the things that actually make it work. And a, an example of an innovation of this department has been reducing a radio to a single chip. For 70 years, there was a particular architecture that was developed by Armstrong in the 1910s. And um, Henry Samueli and Assad Abadi in the 1990s completely changed it. And so all this innovation that's enabled cell phones to come down very far in price is actually a direct result of their innovations. Um, this UCLA is a place where big ideas like that happen. Um, we don't do marginal research. We are looking for the big ideas to continue things. And I'd say right now is the most exciting time to ever be in electrical computer engineering since at least I joined the department. You've probably all heard of Moore's Law by which Computing gets faster, cheaper, lower energy every year by a factor of two or so. And you've also perhaps heard the panic that it's all over, which is, you know, you know, doom, woe is us, right? This is a big societal problem. But in fact, this is a major opportunity for us to rethink where we're, where we're going. We've been on this track for a long time that's been immensely productive, and now we can look at it again and I can tell you that there's incredibly exciting things going on in the department on how to solve these problems from basic devices through computer architecture to mix of algorithms and hardware co-design and um, kind of on and on. It's just uh, an amazing time and I'm envious that those of you who are joining the department can be in on the ground floor of these uh, great things that are going on. I'd also like to echo uh, something that uh, Adnan said about student clubs. ET also mentioned it. One of the best things about UCLA engineering is that we have a culture of students teaching students. In our department, IEEE runs a program for freshmen for about 100 students where they go through a sequence of seven projects, learning how to build circuits, and concluding with an embedded system at the end. There's 100 slots. 200 students apply for it every year. Our HKN chapter runs tutorials for every single one of our courses, including before all midterms and finals. Um, Tau Beta Pi, which is school-wide, runs tutorials for the entire school. There's big participation in these clubs, and I definitely encourage 
getting involved. At the very least, it gives you something to talk about at your job interview besides, oh, I went to class and I did well. Okay, so um, it teaches you practical skills, there's camaraderie, you meet other engineers who are committed to design, and it's really a lot of fun because of the social atmosphere that takes place in it. So um, in concluding, um, just before Bruce talks, Bruce, you know, before we got in here, uh, promised that he would give the best possible presentation that would stand out against everyone. And so, um, given that he's also an opera buff, I thought I would do a little operetta to, uh, you know, it's Royce Hall, and I've, you know, I've always wanted applause. So, so here we go. Here's, here's something cribbed from Gilbert and Sullivan. The uninformed may fear to become an engineer, but of pleasures that are many and of worries that are none. And the culminating pleasure that we treasure beyond measure is a gratifying feeling when a project is all done. <laughs> <laughs>